day everyone. As promised from my previous video, I will discuss science process skills, scientific attitude and scientific method. Each of these elements is essential in the world of science, so let's dive right in. First, let's talk about science process skills. These are the skills that scientists use to explore the world and gather information. Developing these skills will help you in your scientific journey. Here are a few of these process skills. Observing. Measuring. Comparing. Contrasting. Classifying and. Inferring. Do you like observing things in your environment? Observing means looking carefully at things using our five senses. This process skills is used to gather information about objects, people, or events. For example, if you see a butterfly, you might observe its colors, patterns, and how it moves. Observing a butterfly helps you gather important information. Let me give you one more example. Can you tell me what type of flower this is? What color are its petals? Do you recognize the fragrant smell of a sampaguita? By answering these questions, you've used your senses, like sight, to observe the petals and smell to identify the fragrance. The next process skills is measuring. This means finding out how much something is or to describe the property of objects. For instance, you might measure the length of a desk using a ruler or weigh ingredients on a scale for a science experiment. Accurate measurements are crucial for successful experiments. Let me show you how to measure the length using a ruler. First, identify the correct starting and ending points on the object. Next, ensure the object is aligned with the zero mark on the ruler, making sure it's straight and lined up properly. To measure the length, find the point closest to the end of the object and round up or down to the nearest inch or centimeter if needed. Finally, record the length either in inches, centimeters, or fractions of an inch or centimeter. So, tell me how long is this pencil? This pencil is 4 inches long or 10 centimeters long. How about this? How long is this paper clip? This paper clip is 1 inch long or 2.5 centimeters long. How about this? How long is this graduated cylinder? This graduated cylinder is 2 inches long or 5 centimeters long. Now let's talk about comparing. This involves looking at two or more objects, people or events to identify how they are alike. For example, you might compare two different types of plants to see how they are similar in terms of size, color, or leaf shape. Comparing helps scientists find common patterns or characteristics between things. Another example of comparing process is looking at the similarities between a lion and a tiger. Both animals have fur covering their bodies, which helps keep them warm and provides camouflage in their natural habitats. By noticing this shared feature, we can see how lions and tigers, though different in some ways, have similar adaptations that help them survive in the wild. Next is contrasting. This involves identifying the differences between two or more objects, people, or events. For instance, when contrasting the same two plants, you might notice that one needs more water while the other thrives in dry soil. Contrasting helps scientists understand the unique features that distinguish one thing from another. Here is another example. Distinguishing the difference between frogs and toads by comparing their skin textures. Frogs have moist, smooth skin, which helps them stay hydrated and is often adapted for living in or near water. In contrast, toads have rough, dry skin with bumps, which allows them to survive better in drier environments away from water. Next is classifying. This is organizing objects, people, or events based on common characteristics. For example, you can classify animals by their types, like mammals, birds, and reptiles. Each of these animals belongs to its respective group due to specific characteristics. Like fur in mammals. Feathers in birds. And. Scales in reptiles. Finally, let's talk about inferring. This involves making conclusions or possible explanations based on previous observations. 
For example, you notice that the traffic on your street is much heavier in the mornings and late afternoons compared to midday. Your conclusion. The traffic is influenced by people going to and coming back from work or school. Hence, the morning and late afternoon are peak hours when more people are on the road. Now, let's discuss scientific attitude. This is about having the right mindset when doing science, which is essential for discovery and innovation. Here are some examples of what a good scientific attitude looks like. You can practice these attitudes and become successful like Galileo, a famous scientist and mathematician. Curiosity means asking questions, seeking answers, and paying attention to the surroundings. For example, if you see a plant growing in your garden, ask yourself. How does it grow? Being curious leads to exploration and learning. Open-mindedness means willingness to consider new ideas and perspectives. If someone has a different explanation for something you believe, listen to them and accept their ideas. This attitude fosters collaboration and creativity in science. Perseverance means don't give up when things get tough. If your experiment doesn't work the first time, try again and see what you can do differently. Remember, many great discoveries come from trial and error. Persistence means finishing a task in spite of difficulties. Keep trying even if the results are not what you expected. If a project or experiment takes a long time, don't get discouraged, be persistent and keep working until you reach your goal. Creativity means turning imaginative ideas into something useful. If a problem seems unsolvable, try approaching it from a new angle or come up with a unique solution. Honesty means being truthful about your findings, even if the results are not what you hoped for. Honest reporting of data and observations is crucial for scientific integrity. Lastly, caring involves showing concern for living things and the environment. For example, when studying living organisms, it's important to handle them gently and responsibly. Being mindful of how your actions affect your surroundings demonstrates a commitment to ethical scientific practices. Caring about your work and its impact is essential for being a responsible and effective scientist. Finally, let's go over the scientific method. This is a step-by-step -step process scientists use to conduct experiments and answer questions. Here's how it works. In quest of scientific inquiry, experiments are done by following the steps of the scientific method. First, identify the problem by asking something that you want to know, study and learn about. For example, what happens if I water a plant with salt water? This sets the stage for your investigation. Next, hypothesis. Hypothesis is an educated guess or your best guess about what will happen based on your prior knowledge about the problem. You might say, I think the plant will not grow well with salt water because it may harm its roots. Next, conduct an experiment. Test your hypothesis by setting up an experiment. For instance, you can water one plant with regular water and another with salt water, keeping everything else the same. Then, observe and collect data. Keep track of how the plants grow over time. You can take notes or draw pictures to show what you see, such as the height of the plants or the color of their leaves. Lastly, conclusion. A conclusion is made by analyzing the results of the experiment. It's a statement about whether your hypothesis is right or wrong. If the plant with saltwater didn't grow well, you can conclude that saltwater is not good for the plant. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed learning about how scientists approach the world with curiosity, persistence, and respect for evidence. Remember, these skills and attitudes are not just for scientists in a lab. They can help you in your everyday life too, whether you're solving a problem, working on a project, or just exploring the world around you. Always keep asking questions, stay open to new ideas, and never give up if things don't work out the first time. Science is all about learning from every experience, making new discoveries, and finding better ways to understand our world. Thanks for being such great learners today. Keep practicing your scientific skills, and you'll be ready for your next big discovery. See you next time and happy exploring. God bless everyone.